Yeah, hey, welcome back to Career Build Series. This is episode. Uh, so we're gonna try to do is uh, I want to get this Remora really whooped into shape. I'm also considering doing um, some more work on that single engine, um, the single outboard uh, rescue boat as well. So kind of thinking of that as well. So let's go ahead and let's pick up the latest Remora. I did a quick little paint job. I'm not thrilled with it. Um, it kind of looks a little bleh, but. Um, you know, I, I re kept resizing this and then kind of got it a little bit better on the size. And then, um, you know, once it was better on size, I could do a better job. But um, it's not my favorite. Um, it's a little bit tough for this type of writing. Um, it's a little bit on the, on the small side. So, um, you know, could, uh, could revisit that. Um, all right, so we have the new locking system on this as well. Um, let's go take this for a little run. Um, I forget what I need, so I want to take this for a run and uh, see how it's operating. It doesn't look too bad in the world, Remora. Um, using that kind of fancy lettering is a little tough, so I need to fix these. I'm going to actually I'm gonna get in to, the dri to my drive and make a list here. I uh, meant to do this earlier, and I kind of neglected to do it. Um, I tend to try to make a Google Drive for each of my builds, and that way I can easily keep a list of what to do. And so this is definitely will be, make this a build video. And uh, let me just quickly start something real quick here. And that will a way as I find new stuff, I can fix it and uh, kind of keep a list of what to do. So um, if you notice here, my two thrust gauges. Um, here they're all funky so I need to fix those all right and let's see how it performs that's the main thing so let's get going so we have a lean for no particular reason so one of the fins is probably backwards I'm thinking so I'll have to fix that Again, this thing moves like a stab brat. This moves fast. A little bit of bounciness. It's not terrible. But we're doing, you know, 60-something knots, which is nice. Let's throw in a little bit of weather here. I want to see how this functions. Again, I set my rule 50% wind or less for this. Uh, you know, the lifeboat has been dressed up, so the lifeboat's going to be our, uh, our foul weather craft, and this is going to be our more fair weather craft, so... Up to 50% wind, uh, we'll take Remora. So the anti-fly system works well. It automatically chops the throttle. I think what I'm going to do is what I do in um, Brigeau. So right now what happens is when the bow lifts up a certain amount out of the water, um, like so, it uh, reduces thrust to keep it from... Uh, jumping off waves essentially so what it's doing is it's tapping down my throttle it's auto reducing my throttle I th what um, what I do in Rigo that I think works better and I was trying to change and prove it on this is my old anti-fly system which if I could find it on here uh, where is it at here here it is uh, stern anti-fly Okay, so right here is the um, is the anti-fly, and so what it's doing is it's um, right here it's reducing the thrust. I don't want it to do that anymore. Um, there's an issue with that, and so what happens is um, I, I do it a better way. I think with Virgo, I do this. So I do a number a numerical switch box, and essentially I I swap it so I can have my normal clamp come in. Or I can go to this clamp where it maxes it out at 7 RPS. And what that does is it essentially chops the throttle. And what that does is prevents it from shooting up out of a wave and letting the... As soon as the propellers come out of the water, they have very little resistance. They spin up very high RPS. And then as soon as they hit the water, it makes you do a backflip. And so this prevents that by essentially chopping the throttle. So it'll go up, up, up. And it'll sound like that. And the benefits of that is that's kind of how you'd really do it in real life is between the troughs of the waves, you'd gun it 
And then as you get to, you know, the wave, you don't want to jump up off the wave. You chop back your power. You go up and over, and you give it some, some throttle again. So that's essentially doing that. I don't want this other feature. So let's go take that for a test. While, while I'm here, uh, I'm trying to see... My throttles seem very touchy. Um, I want to be able to... to uh, let's, let's test one thing at a time. Let's test this. And then this should behave better over the waves. It's not going to automatically reduce my throttle. I have to do that myself. But I think the anti-fly should work better. Yeah, you hear it go there? See how it chops the throttle? This works better. It automatically lets it speed back up. So I'm my literally my hands are off the keyboard. It's letting it go at max speed. As soon as it comes out of the water too much, the back props come out of the water too much. It automatically chops the throttle. You can hear it chopping the throttle. So that's like an automatic reduction system that you would do with your hand. Let's go straight into the waves and watch how it works. So this should keep it from flying, hence why I call it anti-fly. So it allows you to continue to go fast and it automatically does it for you, so you're not having to manually do it, and you don't get a bunch of flying, and... See, like, you have a big fly like that, it, it reduced the thrust on it, no problem. So that works perfectly, so that works really well. Alright, so that's good. Uh, let's do this, I want to do some maneuvering, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the wind, and this base is pretty tight. And I'm going to do some test maneuvering. I need to dial my throttles in. If you remember when I was trying to connect to the um, to the ship, I couldn't control my speed well enough. I think I kind of have it pretty well dialed in now. See how I can just gently tap and I get very good speed control? Like I'm, br I'm manually bringing it down a, a, a one knot at a time here. So this is actually pretty good. Um, this is the sub base here, so I'm going to kind of back us in here with differential thrust. Um, okay, so desync should be. So that's screwed up. So the numbering screwed up. That's why this is causing a problem. So this should be toggle. So let's go ahead and put um, desync toggle. Okay. Then this should be push. That's also showing. So these numbers are screwed up. So that's good to know. Uh, yep, so that's good to know. Okay, so let's grab this back to the base and we'll do a couple things on this. Alright, so let's um, desync needs to be toggle. That's an easy fix. So it's at four. Desync is toggle. Beautiful. Okay, let's check these. Um, let me check all my numbers. One, two, three, four. Should be, um, why is that 19? 19, 20. That was because it was 1920 before. Seven and eight. And these are probably where it screwed up. Yeah, see, these go back to one. Yeah, see, this is, this is why it's screwed up. Okay. So what do these need to be? Um... What do I need? Let me count them. I think there are eight segments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight. There's so that's 16. I need 16 slots here. So 1920 screws me up here. Let me see. I'm going to change these to um, five. And this will be six. All right, seven, eight. This is going to be nine. Okay. And this will be 17, 17, and then this will be 18. So I had the number screwed up was all it was. 
and then this will be 19. All right, so what am these? So what's that? That's starting with nine. This is starting with five, six. Okay. So I just need to go in there and fix those. Where are we at here? Okay, so this here is my, these are my throttles. So um, nine is going to be my start channel here. Okay, that should fix that. This here should be five and six. So this is going to be start channel five and that will be six. So this is going to be five and six. That should be good there. And then what the hell else did I change? The last two, which are reading out gauges, um, which are here. Yep, that's here. So that's going to be, uh, what is it? What did I do? 18, 19, I think. 18, 19. 18 and 19. All right, let's try that. Should move the boat closer so I don't have to fly over there every time, but whatever. All right, so they're the, looking better. These are idled. Um, those are showing their stuff. Let's see if these perform properly. There we go. Yeah, so once I clicked on this and it was... That's the... What is doing that? Okay, that's interesting. All right, so I need to fix that. So that screw is not engaging at all. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Can I control that side? No, I can't. Okay. Zero thrust is not doing anything, so I screwed something up in there too. So I need to change these over. Okay, so something there screwed up, so we'll go and fix that. All right. So let's check what their numbers are again. Seven and eight. All right, let's find those. So that's off the panel. Panel seven and eight we're looking for. Ten. Two. Now we're at here seven and eight. Hmm. Very strange that behavior. All right, so this is my port side, port side. And I'm looking for starboard. Um, should be a switch box right here. This is panel desync. Uh, it didn't set it up right, so that should be 8, not 18. I took it from another build. I took it from Vigeau, so that should be 8. Um, that fi should fix that. 7 is 0. This can uh, go away. 7 is going to be the 0, so that is... Either 31 or um, I need to put put one for the panel. I did not so. Could you could do more gauges and just not use that? But um, that's that. And then we should have one here for where is 31? Uh, 31 right here. And then what is this doing right here? This is supposed to be it right there. So that's seven. Okay, so that does that. All right, so that should fix that. Let me check it. And hopefully that behaves properly now. All right, there we go. So that's up and running. I do want a little bit of banking. 
you know, real, real small boats bank in like this, large ships bank out. Can't really do banking out, I'd have to fake it. But I want it to, I want it to, uh, bank. I like it how it banks, you know. And then that nav light needs to go. I'm, I'm actually kind of liking my little hand-drawn remora. It's not perfect, but it's kind of cool. Um, the R, the last R could be thinned a little bit, but, you know, it's just kind of, it has a little bit of flair to it. I would like to make a little, a uh, little pop-up pivot, um, kind of, uh, Roll cage is the right term. Uh, just kind of a, not like a bimini, but just something that pops up that will have some lights on it. Just like it looks very basic and it doesn't have any vertical height. And part of the reason it doesn't have any vertical height is it can't. All right, so the space bar works to zero. Let's try to um, zero it with this button here. That works as well. Let's desync and let's do a pivot turn in place. All right, let's go backwards. We have to. Uh, one thing you have to do when you go backwards is you need to reverse the fins. See how it's dragging us under water? That's because we I didn't reverse the fins. That's why you have to reverse the fins. Is it makes you a submarine. All right, so all these are things that need to be done. Okay, so fixing just little problems. Um, okay, let's see. Where is this? So I need to change my linear speed to directional. Um, what controls these fins? Where are you at, fins? Um, right there. Stern fin stability system. Where is it? Stern fin stability. Where's linear speed? Tilt alt. I don't have linear speed connected. I do. Right? No, that's bow alt. Where's linear speed? Linear speed needs to connect into this, so I just have yet to do that. Let's see what my space looks like here. I can go. I can go either way, left or right. So, just I don't have to move it, which is beautiful. Um, all right, linear speed. Number input. Linear speed. Okay. And then what I'll do here is. Uh, bow fin stern fins need to be reversed when we reverse. So, so if this is essentially um, that's less than zero, we want to do some numerical switch boxes. And this just so your fins are going to try to drag you underwater. So they're operating backwards. So essentially when your linear speed reads you a negative number, it says, hey, um, invert that number. All right, so that will go there. This will go there. And then we'll do functions all around, all around. Of negative x. There like such. Don't move that. Please do that. There we go. And then this will invert them when we are um, in reverse. So pretty simple. Pretty, pretty, pretty simple. And yeah, welcome back to Career Build Series and episode 140. Me finishing another video. Um, all right, so that's inverted. This goes like so. Um, update that. I need to connect the linear speed now, which is uh here. Yeah. And then this needs to be directional. Directional gives me a negative number. If it was absolute, it would give me a positive number. So if I was going 10 meters per second forward, it read 10. If I was going 10 meters per second in reverse, it read 10. This will now read as directional, read 10 meters per second forward, and it'll read negative 10 backwards. So I need that negative number to show, to tell me that, hey, you're going backwards. Let's test this now. So I'm just gonna go right in reverse. Uh, make sure we don't get sucked underwater. Make sure it uh, keeps our height. As you can see, not getting sucked under water now. So that's what we want. All right, so pretty pretty easy fixes. Uh, Remora is working nicely now. 
so that little, uh, let's fix that now. You hear that little stall sound? What that stall sound is, I've had to fix this a thousand times on my build. So um, that's just an artifact of my starter, my auto start. So it will automatically start if it stalls, but I need a little bit more of a window. So find the starter. Where are you at starter? Where are you starter? Alright, uh, where are you at starter? That's gear starboard. Uh, let's see. A uh, little, little control F search box and bring up all the, bl highlight the blocks that uh, I'm searching for. That would be nice. Alright, so starter. Um, starter is two off of the panel, so we need panel. I'm looking for two. Channel 10 is an A. Here it is, starter, right? Nope, that's old. What is this? Hmm, mm hmm, what is this? This is, what's this doing? This looks like starter right here. This is old stuff. I, I don't know what this is all about here. Okay, this is all old. Oh, that's APU, so this can all go adieu. Adieu and goodbye. That's old stuff that I don't need. All right, so it is nice to get rid of old stuff. Um, let's see, seat, where is panel, panel, where is panel, huh, starboard engine, where's my panel now, seat, panel, here's panel, 15, what is, I don't have 15, doesn't do anything, 15, yeah, so this is, this is screwy here, I don't need 15, um, what is 15, man? That is, that's old. That's off something else. I need to fix that then. I just have a lot of, um, I don't know, let's call it legacy code from having this on a different, um, vehicle. I don't know where my starters are, man. Where the heck are my starters? Okay, I don't want this to take forever. This, this is one of the reasons I don't like making videos with me, do, or too many videos of me doing uh, building is, you know, I get in these ruts where I'm hunting for things, and that's not fun. Um, looking over all this crap, trying to, there is starboard start, start starboard, Ugh, that's why it was hard to find, as I named it fun, funky. Alright, so channel 2, um, channel 2 and... Wow, these are all over the place. Here it is less than 2.5. Let's make that 3. What's my idle? Idle is... So essentially, so it's trying to restart at 2.5. Let's go to the clutch and I'll show you. Uh, there's a couple, two ways to fix this. So the clutch will... Um, if you notice right here, it will zero the clutch out, which will stop us from stalling um, at 7 or... Trying to see where all my numbers are here. Not player sensor. There's a bunch of conditions that have me zero out my clutch. As you can see, there's a ton of them right here. If um, RPS is greater than four, if it's not greater than four, decrease. And then, so this is going to be channel 31 or 7. This is that. So essentially what I need to do is... Um, So I need to put another condition in here. I thought it was already in here. RPS, starboard RPS, is starboard RPS greater than four? So what I can do here is I can do a less than. So if starboard RPS is less than three, it's gonna, it's gonna, um, essentially it will zero out the clutch. It will be like putting your foot on the clutch pedal if you have any manual transmission experience, which I recommend to everybody who does not. Um, you know, I kind of take that for granted. I, I'm doing a gearing tutorial, and so one of the things, um, you know, it kind of baffles me a little bit, people who don't understand clutches, but it kind of makes sense. You know, you figure a lot of people, especially younger people, are never going to have experienced using a manual transmission. You know, we're going to electric cars so quickly that um, 
that um, you know a lot of people are just never going to experience what it's like to drive a manual transmission. And I I hate going to automatics. You know, if if I'm going to do something that's automatic, I, I want electric. I don't want you know my car is hybrid. I don't want um, I don't want a manual. Um, like I have manual motorcycle. They're trying to like Honda's trying to really push everybody into the dual clutch. DCT transmissions, and I just have no desire. It's, I enjoy doing manual transmission. I enjoy running the machine. That's what I get the joy out of. And so <laughs> they're making a joyless man. Um, but you know, I recommend if you have the opportunity to operate a manual transmission uh, to learn how to do it. It's a um, you know, it's mechanically it teaches you how to do it mechanically, and especially you know, just for the game purposes, it's nice to know how to mechanically operate something like that. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a learning experience, and like anything, it's, it's nice to have that learning experience. Okay, that is set up there. Okay, so that's good. So we're putting that in. So now what this is doing is, at 2.5, you'll get that auto start. It will do that annoying starting noise. And so at 3, it's going to automatically zero the clutch, and so that's not going to allow the engine to dip down that low. That's essentially all that did. And that's the starboard side. I'm going to find the port side. Port clutchy right here. And then this right here goes into there. This goes into here. Uh, and then I need my port RPS. We'll go there, and then that will kind of clean that up. All right, beautiful. So that sets that up there. That should stop that annoying noise when I stall. And as much as I'd rather not test it again, I'm going to test it again. Um, testing it is how you prevent problems in the future. Some of this testing can get tedious, I know, but um, you know it really is the best way to um, to do it. And so one of the ways I can test that out really quickly is is I can um, go forward and then slam it in reverse as fast as I can. And notice we didn't get that stall noise. So that's, it's just an annoying thing. It doesn't actually hurt anything. It, it doesn't mean anything's wrong. It's just an annoying thing with the auto start. The auto start thinks you're stalled, so it tries to restart the engine. And so all this does is say, hey, put the clutch in. Oh, I did a little bit on that one. Uh, I know why, probably. Um, that should have... See, it should be shutting the clutch off. That's what the 31 command is. I just did the 31 command, so if it's 31 or 7, which are the two there, it should be zeroing the clutch. It must just not be doing it fast enough, which is fine. It's not a big deal. Um, just a little bit of annoyance. All right, um, a couple things I want to do. Let's see if I can delete some smoke. I know there are ways to kind of trick delete it. I don't want to trick delete it. I want to try to just um, cat delete it if I can. So let me put some cats on here. Um, sometimes you run into issues where you choke your exhaust out and then you are in trouble. So um, I don't know. I wish they, I think that's a fun, I understand why you need a good exhaust flow, but the point of the cats are they're supposed to get rid of your exhaust. And I understand what the devs are doing, but I think, uh, I don't know. They should just make, they should just beef up the cats a little bit so that, um, you know, if you have a huge engine, you might need three cats, but then you can put, you know, a couple large pumps in there and kill the exhaust. Like, see that? I don't mind a little bit of puffy exhaust. I just don't want constant exhaust. We didn't lose any speed. Let me set put two sets of cats in here, see if that will get rid of the exhaust. I like having a little bit of exhaust, but I don't want a ton of exhaust. And um, it would be nice if you could have a, a little, um, you could click on it and you could set how much exhaust you wanted. Um, you know, and then let's say you, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know if there's any benefit to making us have to pump exhaust out, you know, at, um, you know, and then a muffler would be nice for them to add. Again, I keep saying these things for the add. I, I plan on doing a video where I go through some some requests on the actual bug tracker. And if you guys want to support them, I'll leave the links to the actual things. So there's two sets of cats. This thing has more than enough power, as you can see. Good smoke deletion. Sometimes your exhaust starts to back up. 
Uh, we probably know by now if it was doing that. You hear it's kind of the engine going la 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 la. That is just because we're hitting the rev limiter. Because this thing has more than enough power than it needs. It burns a lot of fuel. Um, and now I want it to burn a lot of fuel. Um, like I was talking about last video, every vehicle that I make, I try not to make a king vehicle that does everything. Um, you know, there's an expression, jack of all trades, master of none, and essentially what it means is it can do everything a little bit, but nothing well. And what I'd like to do, what I prefer is I like to have a master of one, you know, and so, you know, Katie did is an awesome, terrible weather, hover over, do any sort of rescue vehicle. I purposely made Katie did so it's not super strong. I don't want to lift containers with Katie. I can't do it. I can't even go full speed with a with a bucket of water, and that's on purpose. Katie did is supposed to be a light helicopter. It's not supposed to be a heavy lift helicopter. I don't want it super powerful. You know, like some people have been like, oh, well, you should throw a turbine in that. I don't want a turbine in that. Katie did's job is to be a short range, and so short ma range means not a lot of fuel. A short range light helicopter. That's its job. So it's supposed to be light. It's supposed to not be able to lift huge loads. It's not supposed to be able to, you know, um, it's not supposed to have a ton of fuel and have a huge amount of range. It's not supposed to have all these things. I think a lot of people get in this mindset, which is fine if that's what you want to do, that a craft should do everything and do everything well. And sure, I could make it do that. I could, you know, but um, Katie did supposed to be very fuel efficient, which it is. That's why it's diesel. Um, it's not overpowered. You know, when you overpower something, you're burning extra diesel. You don't need to burn. KD did burns just as much diesel as it needs to. It's it's fast, but it's not super duper fast. So there are going to be situations where it's. I would rather take the, the Cormorant because it's faster. Um, KD did doesn't have a huge amount of range because it has those small fuel tanks. So I need to do. I need to really watch my fuel the whole time with KD. I don't with the Cormorant. The Cormorant has 3.68 times the amount of fuel that Katie did has, and it can go faster. Well, guess what? There are going to be missions where I say, oh, I need the Cormorant. And then there are going to be missions where I say, oh, I can't take the Cormorant. I need to take Katie. And so this is how you get your different builds in. And this is how real life works, is you have certain helicopters in real life that would be incredibly impractical to go do a rescue mission with. Um, you know, you have, let's say you have the Sky Crane, right? The Sky Crane is great at taking containers from from here to the Arctic. Uh, my Rotodyne, let's talk about my equipment. The Rotodyne. The Rotodyne is great for taking a container from here to the Arctic. That's its job. It's twin turbine. It's incredibly fast. It goes 240 knots, I think. Um, if I, But it burns a lot of fuel. I can still go 240 knots to the Arctic, I think, and make profit, but not much. But I can also um, increase my prop pitch, increase my prop pitch, and increase efficiency, and I can actually make really good money going up to the Arctic with one container. That's its job. Um, if I go do rescue missions with that, I don't make much money. I can do firefighting missions, but I'm probably going to lose money, and that's on purpose. Is you know, like in real life. Um, you know, I used to fly 50 seat jets. That jet is really good at going um, medium distances at very high speed, carrying 50 people. Um, it is not great at going very short distances carrying two people. You're not going to make any profit. You don't want to do that. You know, there are planes that can do that, that burn very little fuel, that can carry two people and still be profitable. You know, like a Mooney. You know, if you had a company with a Mooney, that would be great for that. You could go pretty fast. Um, you'd lose some speed, but you're going short distance. Uh, it's very fuel efficient. You know, the price of the vehicle is very low compared to 20, a $25 million airplane. The Mooney is probably $400,000, $500,000, you know, so that would be more like it. And so each vehicle should have its own um, benefit. You know, I have to be very careful with Triton. Triton could easily cost me a ton of money. Um, like that last mission where I brought in containers, those two containers paid for Triton's fuel. And so when I go somewhere, if I don't want to lose money, I have to say, okay, well, Triton needs to bring something with it. Or I can say, all right, I've made a bunch of money of profit, so maybe five missions make me profit, but the sixth mission cost me money, but because of that, I still average three missions of profit, you know. And so that's fine by me. And so I don't want one vehicle that does everything. I want one vehicle that does something well. The Remora, super fast, good 
uh, fair weather um, rescue boat. The lifeboat is great in very high, heavy seas because it has the auto shutting doors and it, it um, it's completely enclosed. Um, you know, and so having these different vehicles that do these different things is what I prefer. All right, let's uh, do some more work here. I kind of want to put a fold up thing on here. I'm trying to think how to do it here. So these air filters are kind of going to be in the way of what I'm trying to do. Actually, I can put them probably here. Um, this is the other issue with with the way we have pivots in game. With pivots being two blocks, that's tough. I would like them to make a one pivot. I keep saying, yeah, I wish they'd make this. I need to go and make something. You know, kind of make a um, feature request. Uh, let's see, how can I do this? See, I'd love to add a windshield here, but the issue is this. Um, let me see if I can add it right here. The problem is I can't get a windshield in here with... Um, and have this be able to load onto the um, Triton. I'm trying to see how high the uh, seats go. See, that's blocked right there. So my windshield would have to be all the way up here to make that work. Can't really get a windshield in there. Because I need, this is right here, about that red line is about as high as I can go before I hit the bottom of the helipad. So. Uh, let's see. I could make this permanently vertical, but that still doesn't fix my windshield. Um, not a big deal. I'm trying to think about it. I kind of want to make that um, bimini top or whatever you want to call it. I can't go too wide there without causing myself problems. Uh, let's see. Could make it. Um, no, I can't really make it forward facing, can I? Trying to think how to do this. Let's try this. Um, I can always get rid of it. Yeah, see, like that's a problem that it, it takes up too much of my space. I'm going to kind of need that space here. Pivots are just big, you know, man. Yeah, so I'm just kind of trying to make a little bit of a kind of a kind of almost look like a roll bar. Be a, you know, bimini top is really the right name for it, but um, something that I can put some lights on. I can't go too high on the lights because that's going to be in the way. I'm just I'm I'm pretty tight on space. One thing I could do is actually probably shorten this boat up a little bit. Um, I could shorten this boat up a little bit. I might do that. That will give me some tail space. I may do that. Um, let me get this in. Let me check the proof of concept. I always like to get the proof of concept working and then I can kind of say, okay, because I might right off the bat hate it and just say, nope. And then it's kind of a waste of my time. All right, and then I'm just going to do a throttle. Um, I don't know if this is going to work for me, but uh, so one thing I was thinking is making it so that this automatically goes up when I get on the helm. Um, that could be problematic, um, but I'll see. It could be problematic. We'll see. That's in the area there. We're going to go here real quick. So let's just do... Let's see. Occupied. 
occupied. And then this is going to just go out a number out. Um, so this is going to control those pivots. Pivots. I didn't see what direction they're going, so I'm probably going to have to change them, or maybe have to change them. There we are. Alright, so we'll do a numerical switch box here. So this is going to be kind of like a pop-up uh, roll bar. This vehicle looks strange because it doesn't have any vertical, any, any verticality to it. So this will give it some verticality. Um, uh, what is it going to be? 0.25? No. Try 0 0.25. 0 0.5 rather. Now let's look at the numbers here. I, I don't know what direction I have it. No, that's right. 0.25 should work. Uh, let's try it. Um, so I want occupied on the helm. Where is it? Occupied on the helm. And then I want to go to these pivots here. And so this is going to kind of pop up when I, uh, when I occupy the helm. Okay, that's not... That's going to... <laughs> gonna crush my damn skull. Um, let's see. That is not tall enough. Um, trying to think how to do this. How to do? How to do? Yeah. See, it's not tall enough. I'm gonna be looking through it. Um, i to think how to do this. Let me shrink the boat. So let me see how much I can shrink this. I don't necessarily need to shrink the boat, but um, it is a little bit long in the space, so I can kind of shrink it up a little bit. Let me save this before I do that. Uh, Remora... Uh, let's see where we're at here. I just gonna I'm gonna make some cuts so I know where I can go. All right, so I can cut all that, and then this here can go I think backwards and not have any problems. Is that just cutting top blocks? It is. Yeah, that should be fine. I should be able to go back as much as I need to. One more. One more. Right there. That's where I want it. I actually have space in there to put more microcontroller stuff. Um, all right, so let's try this here. And I'm just checking, make sure I don't have anything in here like that is not. So this looks actually pretty clean all the way around for um, cutting. So if I can make this boat a little bit shorter, um, see how it handles. It might not like the handling if it's too short. But this will hopefully give me some space to operate um, to put a bigger uh, bimini on the back, bigger thing. It just it doesn't have any verticality. It looks super strange. And then I hit the front here on stuff, and it's a little bit it's like right in the money tight where it doesn't need to be. I actually kind of like that looking a little bit shorter. Yeah, I kind of like it looking shorter like that. Um, and then this can go... What is that, three blocks? Three blocks? Yeah, that can be three blocks longer now, which might fix our issue here. All right, let's cut that and let's go one, two, three. I have to change the connection point again, but that's not a big deal. So this should help with the, um, giving it some vertical um, interesting interest of look here. All right, and that needs to go all the way up. Um, then you just change the number on this to one. I thought it was going to be one. I kind of screwed my mind up thinking about when when the pivot has a readout, it reads in quarters, and so it's um, yeah. I like that better. See how it looks? You know, it looked like it didn't have any interest going vertically. This has some kind of vertical interest to it. And then when I get off the helm, 
that will fold down. Um, I'm not thrilled about where the pivots are and how the pivots are super duper chunky. See, like, um, and I don't want that going up and down when I. Um, so what I think I'll do is instead of having it um, operate off of Acopato, I'll do it here and do composite in and then have it operate off of the master panel maybe. And then we'll take logic off the panel here. And then um, systems, I think. So two is systems, so two. So what we'll do is go in here, and then when I do two, two will uh, put up the uh, little light bar. Stop calling it Bimini, it's a light bar. Okay. Yeah, so a little bit of verticality on there just makes it a little bit more interesting, I think. And then that will be easier for me to control it as well. There we go. And then see, um, I'm going to have, I could still walk around it. It's a little bit funky. Um, so I'll try to think about how I want to make that different, maybe. It's not bad. I kind of like it. I don't like these pivots, though. The pivots just stick out too much. They just look very weird to me. Back's a little swamped for some reason. Um, I don't know why. All right, uh, I'll do a little trick trying to... A little bit swamped out in the back, so let me do this. Um, this here, I think, is all clean to delete. So let's delete this out here. What is that? So this is all... Um, underneath here is all the transom. As you can see, that's transom there. That doesn't need to be there, so that chops weight out. So any 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 weight reduction we can do is going to help. That's half blocks. Those have to stay. Those are there. Okay, so I'm just kind of working a uh, way in to get um, a little bit of buoyancy. So we can do um, wedges here that add some buoyancy. Any air volume we can add adds buoyancy. And so you start getting into these issues where you have um, swamped areas you can start to add some buoyancy to try to get some of that back. The pivots, if we could do power pivots, those are just regular pivots. Um, the other pivots, I'll show you in a minute, that would be kind of cool. So see the, bot, the back is, um, it's going into water a little bit less. Um, the other thing is I need to re-index my center gravity, but not by much. Uh, do I have weight blocks under here? I don't. Okay. If I can, st if I can stay away from weight blocks, that's awesome. You know, this is my only weight block up in here. Is that even connected anymore? I think it is. What's that? Um, yeah, that's connected. That's connected. Okay. So this nav light needs to be connected to there. Um, actually, I'll do this. Yeah, I'll do that, and then these spots can go. And then whatever is... Um, and then what are my nav lights are unoccupied? Occupied there. I'll make sure this is a white light. It is. Okay, good. So that's all hooked up now. Um, I don't like the pivots. The old pivots are the only thing that are, are bothering me, and so I wish we could have power pivots on these. Um, yeah. So let me measure. I need to measure the total length. So total length, this can be 32 blocks long to fit into that space, and I need to move these. Um, those aren't going to work anymore for me, so I need to move those. And then this is going to be there now, so let's measure it. Uh, 32 on the nose, so I did my math right. So that's that will fit in the slot now. Uh, the new question, though, is... 
I'm trying to think. I didn't, um, I think it still should fit. Let me see. Let's save this as Remora Backup. Um, I didn't change enough to really be annoying. Let's go ahead and load in Triton. Let's go ahead and load in the new Remora. Now let's stick this. It's slowing me down here because Triton is a big old Johnny. I'm just going to kind of slip this in the spot. Um, instead of me trying to conceptualize this, I can actually try to slide it in and see if it fits and then move it accordingly instead of me just trying to think of it off the top of my head. It would be nice if I could set this in um, without having to spawn it separately, but I can't because as soon as I get it high enough, you see the um, where I stand interacts with the ceiling, and it also interacts with there. Um, but I want to get this lined up properly with the hard point that it sits on. Okay, so that is lined up properly. No, it isn't. Um, let's see. This needs to go back to there. All right, so I need to move some things around. So I need to go, what, one block, two blocks forward. All right, so that means that the hard point needs to move two blocks back. So I'm going to go on my drive, and I'll fix that. So... Uh, HP, two blocks back. All right, let's look at the um, actual connection point here. The, connect the connectors, as you can see, are right on the money. The connectors are where they need to be. So that's uh, that's fine. So what's, what is up with this, though? Okay, that's fine. I, I am one block too far in. That's what I thought I was. Yeah, so that is, these are actually still good because all I did was I moved the nose in and the... Um, the bar but actually no it isn't because when I go forward here the one two blocks that's gonna now be screwed up so these have to go back which is actually I kind of dig that more these were kind of weird in the middle and I had to do three so uh, these will go back two, so we'll have a space and do that okay good so um, let me just visualize this one more time before I do it so these need to go back to so let me just put that we do HP and connectors to back. Okay. Let's open up Remora again. All right. Uh, right. So let's look at this here. So kind of a little bit of a mess here to move all this without screwing everything up. So let's just do it. Um, I want 10 seats. 10 seats allows me to do pretty much all the missions, so that's why I'm doing that. Let's cut this out, and let's move this there. And these need to go two blocks back. So two blocks back would be uh, one block of gap. Okay, so we'll do one block of gap. Okay, which I might like to look at that better anyway. Uh, paint. Where are you at? Paint. Come on, give me paint. Not interior paint. Outer paint. That paint. Okay, good. One block of gap. And then we want these. So cut these and go like this. Like so. Okay. All right, so that's like that. Let's merge that. Okay, and then let's delete out this. Yeah, that was looking funky to me anyway, so I'm kind of glad I had to change that. Okay, this needs to move in one. This needs to move in one. It's kind of annoying just having to move all these, but um, all 
And then I'm going to delete those last two there just to kind of slide all that forward. I'll merge all this together here. Make all this one, or else we're going to have to do it later anyway. All right, so that keeps my 10 seats, which is important to me. All right, let's cut this, see if this fits in. Now, we did shrink the nose. Oh, come on. I'm missing the seats here. All right, this needs to slide back in here like that. Good. We still have space. It's a little bit on the tight side, but um, not bad there. Actually, I can actually use that as a seat back there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I could do that as a seat back there. Um, yeah, I hope that'll work. So let's do this. Grab this here, cut that, move that over right there. We'll do the same on the other side. And I move all these because, of course, this side's a little bit weird on um, my tools that I added. Okay, that's better. Alright, little details. Details make the build, I think. Um, you know, adding all this detail and like, you know, there's some really incredible creators on all the different discords and everything that just do such better detailing than I do and are really fantastic and I the detail definitely makes the build. It makes it so much cooler, so much better. Um, not a huge fan of the brown on the seats. Uh, let's see. That's better. I like that a lot better. There we go. Kind of speaks to what this is doing and its rescue. And then everything's let me make sure this is merged um that's when you get in trouble you don't merge some of your logic all right so that's good that's our new attach point i actually like that it's there center gravity is a little bit far forward but it's not a big deal because since this has double connectors um i don't need it to balance itself it's going to be balanced by that see i wish we could do power pivots like these because I would love to, not that it takes up any less space, but I could probably kind of integrate these into the floor and then power that up um, and power it up, I think would be cooler. But that that is there. So let's do a quick little test of this. Let's save this as Remora Backup. Let's load in um, Triton and let's load it onto the Davit and then we'll call it a video. A little bit of build video for those who like builds. Um, you know, a lot of people have shown um, some support that I appreciate for kind of seeing my methodology. So, um, you know, I'm also, I'm going to start trying to add more chapters in my videos so that if, especially if I do building and I do some rescues, you can kind of jump around. You know, I want, uh, I definitely like when there's chapters if there's something I'm looking for. Um, you know, part of the issue is I, I work about 60 hours a week. And so sometimes I just run out of time to do things like chapters and it's tough for me to do it on mobile because I end up having to use, you know, not that I don't have the money, but to do it, it's, you know, it costs me like, you know, I tend to run out of data if I, if I start running, kind of watch my YouTubes to try to see what I need to do on mobile, um, you know, even if I could. So kind of just kind of going over the chapters takes me a little bit of time. That is... One block too much. What's up with that? Um, did I, nope, I didn't miscalculate. I just moved it incorrectly. Okay, that's right. And so I need to make sure this doesn't hit there. That's good. All right, so see, I can launch Remora next to Triton. 
um, and that's kind of a good way to do it. Uh, see, and I'm working on that other uh, single upward boat. I'm not going to leave the remora on here, probably. Um, what is moving? Something's moving, either that boat or... So this should be connected up to electricity. I, I have infinite electricity still on because I need to... Um, I don't want to go down and have to turn on the ship. That's something I do in a lot of these more realistic ship builds is I... Um, or anything where I have to turn on all my systems. You saw that with probably some of the Katie did videos if you were watching those. You know, it starts making it where my startup procedure, as it becomes more realistic and more complicated, it slows down my ability to test because I have to go, you know, I have to go down to the engine room and start it up. So turn on something like infinite electricity again. Why it's nice to have the um, the creative menu on as it just makes it so much easier that if I can go do that. See, this is annoying as I'm glitching in as I'm trying to push the ship back. It's still doing it, but it's being a little bit annoying. Um, it's not terrible, but it's just a little bit annoying. Okay, so I need to come down and that should grab. Okay, good. There we go. All right, and so the way this... up, oh, up. Oh, why are you doing that? This should not do that. All right. So the way that this system's supposed to work is... Um, it's actually supposed to be a system. Why am I upside down? Uh, there's supposed to be a way that the system that fixes this so that this connector is always off until this one connects. Um, oh, so I, what it probably did was. Hmm. I wonder if I have to duplicate that on the other side. That's kind of annoying. Uh, let's do this as well. Um, Let's go rope anchors here, and then I have some rope anchors, and I'm gonna actually I'm gonna actually rope this boat to the side. Hopefully that will make it quicker to attach, because I can't move. Yeah, see, so now it hangs in place, and it can't slide forward and backwards. That's nice. Okay. If they fix the ropes, I you know it would be kind of cool to go back to rope davits, but um, I need them to fix it first. It's what was doing was I was using this boat and you would get it all the way up there and then it would inexplicably drop like a meter and then it would shoot up a meter and it was like, what is it doing? And it made it very hard to try to use those rope davits and so I ended up having to use um, connector davits, which they have their own benefit is they just, you know, the connectors snap up nicely and they generally don't cause problems. Okay, why is it doing that for? That's very strange. Very strange. Hmm. You know what it is? It's the infinite. It's the infinite electricity that's doing it. That's what it's doing. So see these? These are unpowered. So these should be dummies. These should do nothing. These are the ones that are commanding connections. So this one comes on. The front one comes on. And it should only be able to connect to um, the front one. Uh, yeah, let me see. Make a quick little microcontroller for this. I might have to make a microcontroller for these connectors. Um, let me actually just do this. Copy this. We'll go like this. This one already has that logic in it. So essentially what it's telling is it's telling the the most rearward connector, hey, you can't turn on until the front one connects to the front. And so I have that going up here. It's going connector one if it's not connected or, um, yeah, if the connector, if connector one is not on, uh, it disconnects connector two. So connector one has to be connected before connector two can connect. And that's how this works. And so what I really, that's simple, just a knot between the two. Um, yeah, let's do this. Let's do Zang. And then I just need connector one and two. Bang, bang. Come on, come on. Let me delete quicker, please. Connector one. Uh, do I need that? Probably needed that. No, I don't. Okay. Connector, if connector one is not connected, connector two is released. Okay, so that's good. Uh, 
this should allow me to do it without infinite electricity too. Should, I know, famous last words. Let's go like that. Update this. And then we will cut that. Come on, cut. It's getting a slowdown here because of... Um, Triton is just... Um, Triton is a lot of logic. And it's not bad once it gets in the world. I kind of a beast PC, but it's... Um, still can be a little bit annoying all right so um connector one so if connector one is connected um it goes through the logic and so only when connector one is connected will it allow connector two to connect and so that makes it so that this first connector has to connect to this one first or else these cannot connect that's essentially what it's doing and watch it screw up and make me look like a fool. You're a fool, Tilford. And if you don't understand that reference, you should go watch. Uh, there will be blood, but after you've watched all my stuff. Now, uh, There Will Be Blood is a wonderful movie if you've never seen it. And you can watch it before you finish watching all my stuff. Daniel Day-Lewis um, exceeds me in skill. All right, let's lower this sucker down. Let's try to grab. There we go. All right, see how it grabbed it cor correctly in the first time? You hear how a second later it grabbed the back one? That's what that logic does. So I just need to add this nice, simple, easy cake um, two-block mo um, module to my other build. And then by spawning that with rope just allowed me to not have it slide back and forth and have me have to pick it up and be generally annoying. All right, let's grab it up and see how we're doing, and we'll end it there. I know I said I'd end it about 10 minutes ago, but um, look at that. Gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Let's take a picture for the video. Um, generally in these build videos, I forget to take my picture, and then I'm like, what is up? And then I have to take a picture that might be a little bit... Um, <laughs> the remora looks pretty junk up <laughs> to me handwriting it. It's just it's tiny. It's tough to get it that small. Um of uh, writing. I think it was Mr. G who also um, recommended that I used. See, it makes that stupid beep noise that I get, that ding noise that I get rid of, have to get rid of though, but um, I get higher resolution screenshots if I do it from this instead of Steam because um, my screenshots were looking a little bit low res. And um, so I kind of, uh, you know, I've been using that, but the problem is it. Uh, the command is Alt F1, and Alt brings up the um, the trim in games. So <laughs> your screenshot always has trim in it, so I have to do Alt Z and then take the screenshot and then go out, and then it makes that bing noise. And it's so. Uh, if you're wondering why I have all these pings and pongs going off, but that will grab. Oh, it will not because I didn't actually uh, finish the build. Okay, so I need to move that back. So that needs to be moved back to, and then that new microcontroller needs to go on there. And so let's do this. Let's um, so testing is done. Video is almost done here. Let's do this. Um, let's grab this here. Copy that. Okay. Let's open up uh, Remora Backup. Let's install this somewhere. And then what I'll do is I'll install in the deck. We're a little bit heavy. You see, we're starting to take on a little bit of. Uh, fake water in game again you know the water could come up all the way as long as it doesn't go over the rail but in game it doesn't work that way so um by putting these into the actual floor that's going to give me um more buoyancy because they're not actually also in the hull and then i need to slide this back too which shouldn't be a problem i don't think that is anything um is that anything i don't believe it is uh, always good to check your um, logic and make sure you don't have a node there like that is that's fine this here is this that needs to is what needs to slide back so what I'm gonna do is if I could actually see what I'm doing so this needs to go back to is, is the long story of it all so let's do cut this and actually um, flip this around and if I do that there we go, and that does that. So that is now in place. That will snap together. Um, that is, this is all set. So I'm actually enjoying this build a little bit more. I was kind of, 
I don't know. I was a little in the gutters on it. I, it needed some verticality. It was just too short. It just did not look right. And so um, one more little aesthetic thing that I'm going to do here, and then we will definitely call it, I promise, is <laughs> um, I will go like this. And so that's uh, going to be a little less in the way, um, not by much, but of, of us walking. Um, let me try this, see if I like it. Um, just kind of, again, so much of a build is detailing and, and aesthetics, and um, it's just like, you know, it, it is a huge part of the build, and it actually, that's part of the build that just takes a lot of practice, is kind of figuring out, you know, some people have really amazing um, design language, like Eggnog and Benzin, I really like their aesthetic. Uh, Britzilla, I really like uh, their aesthetic. Um, they do some really great stuff, and so, um, you know, if I, I don't tend to keep a style. I tend to kind of play with different styles. Um, but, you know, it's nice to have, once you add in those details and those aesthetics, do I like that new honky weirdness? Actually, I, I kind of like it going forward a little bit like that. Let me see how I like it. It adds a little shape to it, and that's kind of what I needed. Um, I'm not in love with it, but um, I don't hate it either. Yeah. I can always play with it, but I needed something. I needed something vertical to make it look interesting, you know. Um, and actually, see how it's um, it's hitting the deck. I know I keep telling you the last thing, and then I keep going back and doing something else. But what I'm going to do here is I don't want those spotlights to hit the deck, and I also don't want this completely vertical because it's a pain to me. It, it doesn't look right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fix both problems right now. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to set where I want to go. Infinite electricity is on. Okay. And I'm going to set where I want to go. And so what this is going to allow me to do is I want a little bit of an angle on here. So what I'm going to do is press 1. That's going to turn on my lights. Did I turn on lights? There's lights. Let me go night just to get this set up here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep moving this until I hit the deck which I'm doing now and then so that's fine a little bit of deck is fine but see that's gonna I kinda like a little bit of an angle maybe not that much angle um, to the dangle maybe go I don't know 85 percent you know sweeping back the 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 roll bar nah I don't like it I like it vertical if, if I could do an angle on there it's better, but because I'm doing that hokey weirdness, let me try this. I know, I'm sorry. I keep telling you I'm an end, and I don't. Making a liar out of myself here. Um, let's try this. I might like this at an angle, if I can do that. Um, yeah, let's go to like 75%. Um, you'll notice a lot of these, they do have a sweep back. It's kind of aesthetic so that it looks fast, even sitting still. You know, looks fast, even sitting still. Like that, and then, you notice that, that lights us up, but it doesn't uh, light up the, the deck. Um, I might want it all the way forward, though. See, that's uber-duber annoying, but I can just change the uh, lights. Let me look. Yeah, I like it straight up. Let me see, where was that? Um, okay, this needs to be connected. I would have been like, why are you not connected? Because I didn't connect it. And then those don't need to be powered. Um, that's all hooked up. I'm trying to find where that was again that I had it. Um, let me see, where you at, where you at, where you at, where you at? Um, oh, it's right here. Okay, that needs to go uh, like that. This needs to go away. And then what we'll do is I'll just do the um, additive black. And then I still should have spotlights that are bright but not blinding, theoretically. Um, the bloom effect on the, you know, I'm probably using the terminology incorrectly, but the bloom, if that's what it is, um, on those is super duper bright. But yeah, so, you know, this turned into a boat that I wasn't really thrilled about, and I'm starting to like it, um, and that's always nice. It's always nice when you kind of start to like your build. I didn't like it. It looked too basic because it didn't have any verticality, and I couldn't go vertical because it sits under the helipad. 
Don't like the pivots, but not much I can do about it. And frankly, you know, as the builder, I'm looking, you know, yeah, see, that's softer. It doesn't blind the hell out of me. Um, I can also go amber lights. Uh, but, yeah, that gives me a little bit of something. It gives me a little verticality. I can walk around it. Yeah, it's not a pain to me. That works fine, and um, it's kind of cool. It gives it, it gives it that height, which it couldn't have had otherwise, so that's kind of cool. I like that. All right, so um, if you like the video, please uh, give it a like. And if you have yet to subscribe and you enjoy my content, please consider giving a subscription. I'm going to try not to do too many of these build videos in a row. Sometimes I get on a two-build video um, streak because I start getting at it. I really want to get it done. Uh, this is, I think, operational. I think, you know, there were a couple things that made this unoperational. The the inability to go backwards, um, the that was a problem. Um maneuvering problems, uh, not being able to connect to the ship properly. Those are all essentially problems that made this so I couldn't get it in game. And so um, this will hopefully be ready to use. So I will see you in the next one.